70 P Street. This is the first home that the Edward Hale family moved into when they came from Oakley to Salt Lake City. Hello folks, This uh, I'm standing in front of the home that Edward brought me to when we were first married in 1934. Brings back some sweet memories. We lived here for some time during the Depression and then lost it and had to move out and go somewhere else. There was 10 of us living here and we lived on macaroni and whatever we could get, mashed potatoes, and we'd make, gra gra make gravy out of uh, uh, bacon rind and have for our potatoes. On Saturday night, we went shopping and had a big roast for Sunday dinner, a number seven roast beef that cost us 50 cents. We had lots of hardships while we were here, but we were happy. And then we got into the little cafe, and we, uh, we didn't make much money, but we did have a place where we could eat. And that helped some. We uh, got a restaurant down at 220 South State from the help of the church. We went to the bishop and uh, borrowed $200. And then we went and bought groceries and opened up our little cafe. And all the children were working there, Ruth, Lavaza, Emily, and Ellsworth. And we thank the Lord for Mr. Day, who owns a little grocery store right up the street here. If it hadn't been for him, I don't know how we would have gotten along because he did carry us with the necessary things that we needed. We had some wonderful neighbors. Brother and Sister Clausen lived across the street and so many of the neighbors that are dead and gone now. But it was a wonderful place to live while we were here. I can tell you a story when I was a little girl, how my mother used to meet my father at the streetcar every night and how pretty she always looked because she'd always have a clean house dress on and she'd always go down to meet him at the streetcar stop and when grandpa would get off her face would always light up and they'd give each other a little kiss and my sister Emily we used to be sitting on the steps playing jacks and we always kind of looked out to our eyes to see if she was going to kiss him this night and sure enough she all did always kiss each other and we'd look at each other and say oh how silly oh. Charlie wants to hear about how mean Grandpa Hale was to his grandma. When she was a little girl and she asked her mommy if she could go stay all night with Aunt Bertha, and she said no. So she went to Sunday school and asked her daddy if she could go, and he said yes. But he didn't know that Grandma's mommy had told her she couldn't go. So when she got home, you know what happened? Boy, she got a spanking. A real hard one. 
And I can remember that spanking. I remember when I was a, a small boy growing up uh, with my mother and father and the great person that they both were, particularly as I remember being disciplined by uh, dad when uh, I was yet a, a young lad and the only time that I can recall ever uh, being physically uh, spanked or uh, she might call booted uh, in my life and this was a time when he was busy in the drink stand and I was around whining can I go to a show daddy and and he would said no not now and why why can't I go to a show I, I want to go to a show not now and he was getting quite irritated and the front was busy and they're about out of orange juice and he was busy trying to get this orange juice made and about this time the, he was stirring the orange juice pot and something dropped against it and it cracked uh, open and as it cracked uh, the orange juice uh, just started to spread and roll all over the uh, the floor. Needless to say, uh, that was my answer to head for the door. And as I was heading for the door, his number size nine shoe uh, contacted the seat of my pants and what was in it. And I went sliding through the door there like Sonia Haney on ice. And uh, there was no show, needless to say. And uh, I was happy to uh, that uh, I got out uh, uh, with uh, no serious injury. Okay, I have another little story to tell about my father after my mother died. I can remember how we, especially on Sundays, we always used to have dessert, whether we had dessert during the week or not, we'd always have it for Sunday, but it was always a big treat in the summertime for watermelon. And of course, I didn't like watermelon, and my sister Emily, she didn't like watermelon. Of course, all of our brothers and sisters thought we were really funny because that was really quite a treat to have watermelon. But anyway, just to show what a loving father it always make sure that we had jello, and when I had jello, so we wouldn't feel neglected. And that just shows what a loving father that we had. This is a little box for a lot of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This little box for a lot of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This little box for a lot of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine all the time, let it shine. All around the neighborhood, I'm gonna let it shine. All around the neighborhood, I'm gonna let it shine. All around the neighborhood, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine all the time, let it shine. Kids, this is where your great-grandparents are buried. Here's where Edward Hunter Hale is buried and his first wife, Gertrude Bates. Grandpa Hale was born in a little town up in Idaho, just 39 years after the pioneers came into this valley. He lived for a little more than 80 years. Is that a long time? Yeah. yeah. Do you know some of the things that uh, he would like us to do in our lives are? What? One of the things he'd like every person in the family who is eligible and able to go on a mission to go on a mission for the church is he always had a great testimony of the truthfulness of the gospel. And he was so excited when I went on my mission. He gave me a special 
blessing and was really thrilled and interested in the missionary work that, that I did. And another thing, he would like us to live our lives so that we can be together as a family when we all meet again on the other side, the day of the resurrection. He was a real great man, and if we can be like he was in our lives, we won't have much to worry about. I hope they call me on a mission when I have grown a foot or two. I hope by then I will be ready to teach and preach and work as missionaries do.